Pade goza bradile bontara da bade koza talamande Repa sopa katalamande Shadile broda gabade koza talamande Amale
Shara ni broda ya baleko sata la mande Reba de kose prota kapata la manda Riga sata kapato la manda Mila nisuami Rebo la kapara ni lebo sata la mande Reka sata kapato rana baleko sata la mande Rebo sata la manda Reka baso brata la mande Sebo raka pasata la manda Vizazi hadi vizazi vya kufaa we we.
God in a few minutes. And I know the Lord has something amazing for us. I want us to learn today on I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Okay? Yes. Kwa kiswahili wanasema si aibiki Yesu. Hallelujah. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I want us to see some amazing things in the word that will help us. Romans 1. Romans 1. Romans chapter 1. We are going to read verse 13. Romans 1, 13. Okay. Uh -huh. So let, let's start with the New King James Bible from verse 13. It says, Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but I was hindered until now. This is Paul talking. That I might have some fruit among you. The fruit is people. Then he says, just as I have among the Gentiles. Look at verse 14. I am a debtor both to the Greek and to the barbarians both to the wise and to the unwise Paul says I have a debt okay I owe people something watch what he says in verse 15 so as much as is in me I am ready to preach hallelujah ready and available to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also Verse 16 is where we get our teaching today. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Hallelujah. The gospel is the power of God. Amen. Now verse 13, Alisema, I am a debtor to the wise, to the unwise, to the Greeks, to the Jews. Because everyone should hear the gospel. Everybody should hear the gospel. And we owe them, watch, he says, we are debted. We owe people to tell them the gospel of Jesus. Go back to verse 16 and put up the NIV or NLT. Okay. Get me a version that says, I refuse to be ashamed. That one is even more stronger. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh -huh. He says, I refuse to be ashamed. Amen. I refuse to be ashamed. When the name of Jesus is called, I refuse to be ashamed. Do you know something, brothers and sisters? Jesus hung on the cross 33 years of age and he was naked on the cross. And he was not ashamed. In fact, look at Hebrews 12, verse 1. Hebrews 12, 1. And see what this Bible says. So you see why we are not ashamed to tell the world about Jesus. As for us, we have all this. Come on, come on. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us you know there are two things here kuna sin and then there is weight there are some things that are not really sinful they are weight they are weight and because they are weight they delay you they stop you from running as fast you can't go as high as you ought to go because they are weight so he says, lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares you and run with patience the race that is set before you. Can you see there is a race before you? Use the NIV please, Paul. And watch what he says in the NIV. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, 
let us throw off everything church say everything everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us you see there are things that hinder you from preaching the gospel there are things that hinder you from working with the Lord and he says throw them off amen he says throw them off hallelujah I say praise the Lord the things that hinder you, throw them off and the sin that so easily entangles you. Run with perseverance. Okay? Be patient as you run this race that is marked for you. Hallelujah. Go to verse 2 because I want to show you how Jesus was not ashamed. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him and do what the cross scorning its shame okay use N N NLT so you see scorning say despising okay the shame of the cross uh -huh. who we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him he endured the cross disregarding its shame okay despising the shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor besides God's throne. You know, when you take Jesus' shame, you will be enthroned in this life. Are you hearing me? You will be enthroned in this life. There are blessings that come with taking his shame. In a world where they think when you say you're born again, it's shameful. It's not. It's not shameful. It's something you ought to rejoice that you're born again. Hallelujah. Look at this scripture. Luke 10 verse 19. Luke 10 19. Luke 10, not Mark. Luke. I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Hello? All the power of the enemy. You can walk among snakes. Not just snakes. It's not these animals he's talking about. You remember in the Garden of Eden, the devil entered the snake to come to tempt Adam. Do you remember? So anytime you see snake in the Bible, it's referring to the devil. It's referring to demons. Just like also when people dream and you see snakes, those are not dreams from God. Are you here? God's dreams don't have snakes. Huh? You came to church now. Hallelujah. Yes, they're not from God. Okay? Look, I have given... That's why such dreams, you dream being chased. Which, what are they praising? Fear. You are afraid the whole night. God cannot give you sleep then scare you the whole night. It's no God. God's dreams are peaceful. God's dreams are exciting. They reveal the future. Okay? They come with peace. You don't want the dream to end. Okay? Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. You can walk among snakes and scorpions. Scorpions do the same thing. It's in Revelation. And he says, and you can crush them. Nothing. Say nothing. Nothing will injure you. You better believe it. Nothing will injure you. Because if you don't believe this, the devil will take advantage of you. You know what the devil works on today? Is ignorance of God's children. Because God's children do not know, he takes advantage of it. Once you know, he has nothing to take advantage of. So he says, you will crush them. Look at verse 20. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Can you see what gives us joy? That I am registered in heaven. I am a citizen of heaven. Okay? So from today, take pleasure. Rejoice at saying you are a child of God. It's special. The one you call your father is the monarch of the universe. Hallelujah. Go back to Romans 1.16, Paul. And let's speak from there. Hallelujah. 
I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God okay it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes let me tell you something here. you see this physical body you have is the only thing required to continue being on earth once you lose this body del you are no longer allowed to stay on earth why is because the earth is a physical place and it needs a physical body okay are you listening now watch in this world there are two kingdoms is that the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light There is nothing like sijaokoka sana hakuna kuokoka kidogo it's either you are truly born again or not born again there is nothing like in between like jesus said he doesn't like lukewarm it's either you are cold or hot do you understand that he doesn't have anywhere at the middle hakuna katikati now here's another thing as long as you are in this physical body you can god get born again but if you lose your body that means you die there's no other answer for you that's why people say things like why can't the devil get born again kwa nini asiubiriwa okoke sote twende bingoni let me tell you why the devil are you here he is an angel he is a spirit are you following the devil watch this once he sins the devil does not lie Listen to me. He doesn't lie like you do lie. No, the devil is the lie itself. Do you understand how deep that is? The devil does not steal. No. Because of his nature of being a thief. When he steals, he is being himself. Unalo what I'm saying? This thing is in his nature and so much so it's a permanent nature. He cannot be changed. Are you hearing me? This is also why in Genesis 1 when Adam th- chapter 3 when Adam and his wife sinned do you remember Bible says God sent them out of the garden and then he put flaming swords so that they don't come and eat the tree of life why is because they were sinners already if they eat the tree of life they become like the devil they can never be saved Munashika sasa So God sent them out and sent us Jesus So don't be ashamed. The gospel is the only way man can be saved. There's no other way. Okay? There's no other way. And once you die without believing us, you're done for. Now, do you know something, eh? Eh, Collins. Look for the scripture where Jesus gave a story of the rich man eh? and Lazarus who was at the gate. Let me show you some interesting things. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, I want to show you some things. Glory to God. Lengo langu leo ni mkuu wa ubiri nyote. All of you to start preaching. Amen. It doesn't take much kukua muubiri. In neno tu. Collins, do you have it? There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen. You know, his story what was so much kitambo. Then they said, I don't want riches. Rich people will never enter heaven. That's what the Bible is teaching. No. The Bible, the Bible is not teaching rich people not enter heaven. They quote also another scripture that says it is hard for rich people to enter heaven. It's like the camel entering the eye of a needle and they read that and say oh rich people never enter heaven no in fact god is the one that gives riches but his riches don't bring sorrow his riches come with peace there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day next verse but there was a certain beggar named lazarus full of sores who was laid at his gates verse 21 quickly Paul desiring to be fed with crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his sores 
22. So it was that the beggar died, was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried. 23. This is, you know, Nataka Mushike Kitfulani. His story, it is Jesus giving this story. And I want you to know something. Jesus never gave uh, false stories. Peter says, we have not believed fables. So when Jesus gives this story, remember Jesus is God. He is telling you that something that happened before he came to this earth. You're here. He saw this happen. So you better believe it. And being in torment, this is the, 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 the rich guy. He in hell, you know, he lifted his eyes and saw Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. 24. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Said Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. It's personal. It's, it's tailored for you. Do you understand me? As a matter of fact, it's called a, a lake of fire. There when you open your mouth, fire enter. When you open your eyes, fire enter. And watch this. There is no break. It's eternal. Are you following me? Now I'm telling you this why I'm telling you this because after Mumelewa, the punishment that is waiting the man who is not born again, you will go for them in love. You will go for them. You will not wish even for your enemy to go through that. So he cried. He said, send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Look at verse 25. But Abraham said, son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things, likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. 26. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great girl feast. So those who want to pass there, you cannot come to me, I cannot come to you. 27. Then he said, and I hear what this guy is doing. He is in hell. You think while in hell, you'll be doing other things. You know what he said in hell? Watch. The man said, I beg you therefore, Father Abraham, that you send him to my father's house. Eh? He's a rich man. He should say, send him to my father's house. Tell him to bring me my expensive watch. Tell him to bring me my, you know, title deeds and all these things I have. You see what he's sending him to do in his house. Watch, 28. For I have five brothers. What matters once you live this life is the life of people. I have five brothers that he may testify to them. Are you here? After you see this, you look at your brother who is not born again. And even if you don't preach, you will cry for them. You look at your mother and father who is not born again. You will cry for them. For I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also should come to this place of torment. He said, I don't want this for my brothers. Put the Passion Bible, Paul. Tell him to witness to my five brothers and warn them not to end up where I am in this place of torment. Do you understand this? Jama Ako here, instead of saying hatred feeling him, and he said, let that one come here and feel it. No, he has become a preacher nowadays. He's now telling people, go preach. Lazarus, go say it. You know what Abraham said to him? Look at verse 29. Abraham replied, they have already had enough warning. They have the teachings of Moses, the teachings of the prophets, the teachings of Ben, eh? the teachings of another pastor, another prophet, another apostle. Abraham is saying, you don't have to go down. There are pastors there, there are people there who are preaching. And the prophets, they must, hello, not should, not shall, it must obey them. That's the only way. And lastly, verse 30. But what if they are not listening? Eh? 
the rich man anauliza what if my brothers are not listening eh? can you see his feeling for them hello am i scaring you or blessing you <laughs> hallelujah but what if they are not listening the rich man added if someone from the dead were to go ah hiyo wataamini hmm? and warn them they would surely repent if someone is Alex hello look at verse 31 Abraham said if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets neither would they believe even if someone was raised from the dead huh? you see that person that says unless afufuke aniambie even if there is a rex that is to tell you it takes more than a preacher for people to get born again are you here it takes also our prayers for them wewe kabla hujawa kwako ni kuna mbili wanasema sio leo actually they tell me on the street siku yangu ijafika na yes which is that siku you don't know the next minute life that we are living here is very unpredictable we don't know the next minute why don't you believe now hello why don't you believe now let's see some more scriptures hallelujah I say praise the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Mbona niliwaambia fear does not come from God. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Therefore, do not be ashamed. Okay? Do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Hallelujah. Verse 9. God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our hearts but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before time began hallelujah so don't be ashamed don't be ashamed to preach the gospel okay once you receive Jesus Christ something happens let me see whether i can get that scripture for you Acts 16 Acts chapter 16 verse 34 Acts 16:34 Nitai sifazaku Look at this put the NIV The jailer Ameokoka he just got born again this jailer the jailer brought this is Paul and Silas he brought them into his house and set a meal before them he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God hello he and his whole family who jamal yokokea prison and then he said i want to take you home for my family too But Bible says when he got born again joy filled him not fear when you receive Jesus is joy that fills your heart Hallelujah Now put up 2 Timothy 1 let's use the amplified now Paul That's the one I'm looking for. 
for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, a spirit of being a coward, a spirit of fear. He has given us a spirit of power, of love, of self judgment, and of personal discipline. Okay? Look at verse 8. So, do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord Jesus. Okay? Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to tell people about Jesus or about me, his prisoner. But take with me your share of suffering for the gospel. Now, I can discover this next part clearly to you. Continue to preach the gospel regardless of the circumstances. If you preach and they insult you, preach again. If you preach to someone and he says, I don't want to hear that gospel, come the next day and preach it. Why they don't want to hear his tale is because they have lied. Put 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 so you can see this. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3. But if our gospel is in some sense hidden behind our veil, it is hidden only to those who are perishing. The one who is lost. Verse 4. Among them, the God of this world, Nanakwambia, who is that? It is Satan. He has blinded their minds, the minds of the unbelieving, to prevent them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of Christ. This is why people don't believe. They are blind. Their minds are blind. So when they hear the gospel, they don't understand it. When you preach to them, they think you're trying to get money out of them as a preacher. When you preach to them, they think you're trying to get them to come to your church. They are blind. Their eyes are blind. And you can see the only thing that breaks this blindness is prayer. Do you know something? You are also in the same place. Ephesians 2. Put verse 1, Paul, quickly. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you, you, and you, and you, and you, he made alive when you were spiritually dead, separated from God because of your transgression and sin. Verse 2. In which you walked, you are following the ways of this world, influenced by the present age, in accordance with the prince of the power of the air, Satan. Can you see who drives the unbelievers? Satan is in them. He is influencing them. Have you ever met someone or seen someone, maybe on TV or somewhere, someone that killed their entire family? I'm saying, why did you kill someone? They don't have a reason why they did it. Because the reason and how the devil influences you is with your thoughts. He puts thoughts in you. He will never tell you, I am certain, kill for me. No, you just put thoughts in you to kill. He will never tell you, I am certain, kill yourself. No, he will tell you, give you thoughts to do it. That's how he does it. And by that, you are the one that does it. So he says, with the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit, watch, who is now, now, this time, at work in the unbelieving, is at work in them. Who fight against the purpose of God. That's why when, when, you, when I, I fight brothers and sisters, every in the congregation of the Lord, and people keep to be shouting, oh no, my enemies are dying by fire. And I'm asking, who are your enemies? You have just one enemy called the devil. People are not your enemy. People become your enemy when the devil uses them against you. Do you understand that? So really the one that is fighting me is not Usna. 
is the one that is using Usla to fight me. And I am smart. I don't fight with flesh. Eh? I don't wage my war physically. I go to fight the one behind this person. Are you following? So you are the same way. The same way. But Jesus saved us. We go again to 2 Timothy. This time around, let's use the Living Bible. Let's change version again. The Living Bible. with me for the Lord for he will give you strength in suffering hello you will be ready to be insulted because of Jesus hallelujah now lastly Collins look for the scripture I have like two more scriptures then we add this look for the scripture where the disciples were beaten because of preaching Jesus in the book of Acts it's probably in chapter 4 or 5 there Jesus, they will hate you too. Now watch. They left the council chamber. Now please, I want you to go back to where they say what, what was done to them. Do you wonder what happened to these guys? Verse 40. The council accepted his advice and called in the apostles and had them done what? Beaten. Ah, apostles. 
And you know the issue of Kichapaya Mutoto. The Jews will beat seriously. Okay? Serious beating. And this is no simple beating because it's the devil bringing persecution. They are beating under the influence of the devil. They were beaten and then they were told never again to speak in the name of Jesus. And finally, they let them go. If it was today's Christian, that would be the end of preaching the gospel. Next verse says, when they left the council, look at this. When they left the council chamber, rejoicing. Can you imagine that? Beaten, but rejoicing. Rejoicing that they were counted worthy. It's an honor. They were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for his name. Hallelujah. Yes. I am glad that someone is insulting me because I believe in Jesus. I am glad. Okay? Matthew 5, verse 13. Let's read verse 10. Matthew 5, 10. classic edition called blessed happy enviably fortunate and spiritually prosperous is you if you are persecuted because you are good use the message bible now let's start from there and i'll show you some wonderful things you are blessed when your commitment to god provokes persecution because of how you are given to the things of God, Usla, they persecute you. The Bible says you are blessed. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. The more they insult you, the deeper you go into God's kingdom. And verse 11. Not only that, count yourself blessed every time people put you down and throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for their comfort. You are revealing the truth so much and they are not comfortable. Hallelujah. I say praise the Lord. Amen. Let's read the last scripture now. 1 Corinthians 9 verse, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 16. utterly miserable. Woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. 
verse 17. If I am volunteering my own service, my free will, then the Lord will give me a special reward. But that is not the situation. For God has picked me out and given me this sacred trust. And I have no choice. The gospel means good news. If it's good news, don't keep it to yourself. Tell people about it. Verse 18. Under this circumstance, what is my pay? What is my pay as a preacher? It is the special joy I get from preaching the good news without expense to anyone never demanding my rights as a preacher. Now, first time back in the day when I took you Kina Collins and Kelvin out on the street to preach, it was your first time. Most of you were afraid to go preach. And I put you two by two. You know the Lord sent them two by two. Eh? I put you two by two. Most of you, you are afraid to preach the gospel. Because there are people on the street, the way they look at you, you are thinking, with the man and each other. But when you start preaching, you realize they want to hear what you are sharing with them. But remember, there was one brother, I won't mention his name. He went preaching, they chased him, insulted him. When they came back, he told me, you will never again go on the street. Do you know something about that brother? Today, he is winning souls almost every week on his own. No one is telling him to do it on his own. Because of what? There is joy that comes from preaching. Do you remember what would happen if we were preaching on the street for one hour? When we came back, we were always full of joy. That's the result of it. In fact, look at Luke 10. We'll come back. Verse 17. Jesus has sent them to preach. They came back. Let me show you how you come back. It's always the case when people get born again, you get happy. When the 70 disciples returned, they, they joyfully reported to them, huh? even the demons obey us when we use your name. Look, use the King James or New King James so you see how they came back. Then the 70 returned how church? They returned with joy. That's how you come back. Whether they beat you, insulted you, the Lord will always give you joy as you come back. That's what happens. The joy of leading someone to Jesus Christ. The joy, sometimes that joy will even go to the person that has gotten born again. The Bible says the man jailer was filled with joy for believing in God. Once you believe, joy comes in your heart. Hallelujah. Let's finish from where we were now. First Corinthians 9 verse 18. Under this circumstance, what is my pay? It is the special joy I get from preaching the good news without expense to anyone. Never demanding my rights. Huh? Never demanding my rights. Have you met preachers on the street that demand their rights? Do you understand what I'm talking about? A preacher will not leave your place of work until you pay them. Paul said, I don't demand my rights. My joy is that people had the gospel. Are you hearing me? The one that sent you will pay you. The man I've been preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching. That God you're talking to us is able to feed you. The truth of the matter is if you really bless people, they will bless you back with things, with resources. You don't force people to do it. They will do it. Huh? It's the same thing. When you're blessed with what the preachers say, usually that's what you do. You give them what you have. Are you here? That's why Jesus told his disciples when you go preaching, leave your money, leave your clock, leave everything. Go just like that, only with the gospel. Preach, say. Why did he say that? Because when you go without money and you preach the gospel with the right motive, people will feed you. People will give you things. I'm telling you. Including Jonah that came with a very worst message. People hosted him. Are you hearing me? 
hata John the Baptist the man is preaching repent and when people repent wakikuja kwake anasema brood of vipers poisonous snakes who told you to repent he has been preaching and people still come to him because he is sent by God are you here what is my 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 joy is preaching the good news verse 19 This has a real advantage. I'm not bowed to obey anyone. He says as a preacher who is not being paid, I am not bowed to anyone. So I won't preach to favor the one that paid me. I'll preach the gospel. I'm not bowed to anyone just because he pays my salary. I I wish some preachers can see this scripture. Yet I have freely and happily become a servant of any and all so that I can win them. Verse 20. When I am with the Jews, I see as one of them so that they will listen to the gospel and I can win them to Christ. What is he say? He is saying ukienda mahali watu wana kazi ya fulani, look like them. Huh? Yes. Adopt to them. And that is not to say become a sinner. No. Fit people from where they are. Right? Now, I tell people jokingly and it's real true when you go preaching in these houses there are places you go to and the food they put on the table hey ndugu imagine you go preaching in China and someone is so blessed and say umetupata hata sahile tunakaanga nyoka or some other thing they are cooking as a preacher you cannot say no Jesus said eat whatever that is offered huh Yes, ukipata wa makupikia what other those guys can eat even rats. If they put it on the table, you eat. As you eat, you're becoming one of them. They see, ah, so he's one of us. Whatever they put on the table, I know something. Even the things that at one time we were winning souls in Limuru, and there was this lady, she was allergic to eggs, allergic to beans, allergic to so many things, and she was going out for soul winning. I said that cannot be the case. Let's pray. When you go out and they give you what you are allergic, you know, eat. We prayed. She went out, ate all those things. She's okay. Because you see, when you go out there, God is protecting you. Are you hearing me? God is protecting you. So to the Jew, I became as a Jew. When I am among Gentiles, I follow who follow Jewish customs and ceremonies. I don't argue, even though I don't agree, because I want to help them. verse 21 quickly when with the heathen i agree with them as much as can as i can except of course that i must always do what is right as a christian okay unaona you must still maintain your values it's not compromising you must maintain your values as a christian okay? and so by agreeing i can win their confidence and help them too verse 22 When I am with those whose consciousness bother them easily I don't act as though I know it all and I don't say they are foolish can you see how you treat people The result is that they are willing to let me help them when you treat them that way they say talk to us Okay Yes whatever person is like I try to fight are you here I try to find a common ground with him so that he will let me tell him about Christ and let Christ save him. So when we go preaching huko mashabani and you find someone alafua nguo unampata analima usiende hapo muambie aache kazi ya kusikiza join them in what they are doing. As you join them in what they are doing you start you know preaching the gospel just like the Ethiopian official and Philip he is going down in a chariot and a soma bible when Philip joins him he doesn't interrupt him he says do you understand what you are reading okay that's where you pick it from when you find the common ground people will listen to you lastly verse 23 i do this to get the gospel to them and also for the blessing i myself receive when i see them come to christ hallelujah verse 24 ah. 
back to 23 now. Put the Amplified Bible. I want the one that says, I have become all things to all men. Uh, thank you. To the weak, I have become weak. That I might win the weak. I have in short become all things to all men. That I might by all means, at all costs, hello, in any and every way, save some by winning them to the faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. So win them by every means. Okay. Come out your afkiako. The only time they are available is if you go out somewhere, have something to eat or you, something they like. Take them for that something they like. Then from that place, preach the gospel. Fight the common ground. Down. And from there, preach the gospel. Okay. Yes. God has sent us as sheep among wolves. He said, while you're there, be wise as serpent, be calm as doves. While you're in their midst, okay, chase them from there. Amen. Father, we thank you for this amazing time you've given us to hear your words. Lord, we give you praise. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father, for we are bold testifiers of the gospel. We will preach your message with boldness. We will bring fruit into the kingdom. Many will be saved by hearing our word of mouth. I pray the Lord for everyone in this place listening to the word. Stir in them such a desire, such a zeal and a passion to preach the gospel, to witness to family and relatives about you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for we are being fruitful and productive in the gospel. In Jesus' blessed name we 